Hazel, our library, um, which you will be able to visit soon. Again, um, uh, ask any questions. So let's do a test to just make sure, I'm gonna assume you just didn't have any questions, but I don't want to assume that the chat is working properly. So maybe um, let's test the chat. And if in one word you can describe the emotion you felt when you got selected for CASP, I'll ask that you put that in the chat, please. If I don't see anything in the chat, I will assume that the chat is not working properly. Okay, see yeah. it. We got overwhelmed, surprised, static, let's go. Andy, I like, I like that sentiment. All the feels, Rhea. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the chat's working. Okay, so questions. Any questions you have pops into your head, drop it into the chat. But remember, so we're gonna get um, through as many questions as we can. And if we don't, just make sure, know that we're gonna work to, um, to get it resolved. And if you have anything that's specific to you, just DM it to us. So again, um, just like in Chancellor Kosla's video, um, how he mentioned, so we are, um, there's really two parts to CASP. Um, and at UCSD, we love acronyms. So just remember CASP, this is the acronym that you are a part of. And there's the Chancellor's Associate Scholarship, which is the $10,000 scholarship. And then there's the support program, which you commit to by accepting the scholarship. So you're entrusting us that we know what we're doing and that we're going to hook you up with opportunities, resources, and introductions to people that are going to help you define what success means to you and then to help you achieve it during your time at UCSD. And that's really the main role of CAS. So the scholarship was started in 2013. Our program started in 2014, and we just help you during your time at UCSD and even beyond that. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Um, there's over a thousand CASP students on campus. Um, we have alumni and we're a strong and mighty and really, really tight community. Um, so whenever you see, um, you'll get one of these beautiful shirts that you see on the screen. Fiat Lux is actually the motto of the University of California system. And it's Latin for let there be light. And we take it as our own motto because we feel like I mean, our energy and our spirit and what we help do as a community really helps just, um, yes, you get free clothes, Andy, and lots of swag, lots of swag, all the swag. Um, and even in a remote environment, I, I mean, very early into the pandemic, I became friends with all of the mail service folks because I was there every week putting together packages and, and uh, mailing it out. So you will get lots of swag, um, but that's what CASP is. And um, it's something that is really difficult to put into words because we're more of a community. Um, and I hope that during your time, you'll get to um, define what, what CASP is to you, but really it, it's a community of support and a $10,000 scholarship. All right. So I'll be going ahead and explaining a little bit about what does it mean to be a part of CASP and some of those uh, commitments and opportunities that you get when you say yes to us. So as Belinda mentioned, um, one part of CASP is the financial part. So students who accept the Chancellor's Associate Scholarship can receive up to $10,000 um, a year for four years if you are an incoming first year student. Um, again, this can be different depending on everybody's financial situation. So if you have any questions regarding your financial aid package, Michelle will be able to provide more information about that and her contact info. Um, but just know that generally speaking, majority of our students receive up to $10,000 per year. Um, however, the other part of that is what can benefit you in regards to developing as an individual during your time here at UCSD. And we're really proud of a lot of the opportunities and a lot of the work that we put in to make sure that our students are able to gain as much knowledge and as much experience throughout their time at UCSD that will help them be, um, you know, either prepare them for a future job um, after post-grad opportunities, internships, things like that. Um, so 
some of the things that we, these are just the tip of the iceberg, is that we have a summer transition program, CAS 101, which is led by Rhea, um, our student success coordinator. You'll get more information about that once we get closer to summer, but it'll, you'll, you'll get more info. So don't worry about it right now, um, but you'll have a lot of opportunities to meet different campus partners and departments um, during that time there. It's like a preparation for orientation, but not your orientation. Make sure you sign up for your college orientation. Um, we have a lot of leadership development opportunities. We work with a lot of partners across campus. So if they ever have any opportunities they want us to share with our scholars, we make sure to inform you all through a monthly newsletter, send targeted emails. Um, we also send uh, text messages via a texting platform called Signalvine. So once you register officially with us, you've accepted your offer and we're ready to get all your info, we will ask you if you are comfortable sharing a mobile number. Um, we promise not to blow up your phone with text messages, but it's just reminders for upcoming deadlines, opportunities, and just in case you need any additional information throughout the academic year. Um, financial aid and academic counseling. So as we mentioned, Michelle is our financial aid liaison who is there to help you in case you have any questions regarding your financial aid package, FAFSA, California Dream application, loans, if that's something you need um, or anything really money related. And another thing is that we work really closely with all of the seven colleges on campus so that you able, are able to have a individual that can help you in regards to questions or signing up for classes or requirements or once you finally hit graduation, making sure that you have actually completed all the classes that you need to graduate. Um, guaranteed university housing, I'm sure Pachia will be able to provide more info about that, but students are guaranteed four years of on-campus housing um, throughout their time at UCSD, as long as you meet all of the upcoming deadlines and requirements. Again, Pachia will provide more information for that once we get to her section. Um, faculty and peer mentorship, we have a peer mentorship program. We during your first year, you're able to um, talk with a peer mentor who's really there to guide you and be there as a person to contact in regards to questions that you may have about just your journey at UCSD, whether that's classes, organizations, the stress of life that we all go through. Um, they're really just there to help you transition into UCSD during your first year. Um, priority enrollment. This will be a really big one. Um, all of our students receive priority enrollment starting their winter quarter of their first year, and they continue to receive priority enrollment throughout their entire time at UCSD. Um, once you start getting into those competitive classes, you'll realize how nice it is to not have to worry about not having a spot in your classes. Um, so as long as you're able to complete all of your requirements and be in good standing with the program um, and everything, you'll be able to receive priority enrollment regardless of how long you're at UCSD. And again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many much more opportunities available for you all, um, but just so that you know, you all get excited for what's to come. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to our next person. Yes, so now we're gonna go over some frequently asked questions. Again, so these are not exhaustive. These are just some of the questions that we see come up a lot, especially for newly selected students. So there's a question that came in the chat and I'm just gonna say it out loud so that when Pachia gets to it, Pachia is our housing, everything, our housing liaison, but she's so much more, she's so much more than that. Um, but uh, the question that came in is, is the guaranteed university housing free or do we have to pay? Um, so I'll repeat it again. I'm going to put it in the chat. And when we get to the housing section, we'll make sure to answer it. So the question is, is the guaranteed house, university housing free or do we have to pay? Um, and one of the questions that's not on here that I'm going to go ahead and answer is, do we require you to live on campus? No. Um, but there are so many benefits to living on campus. Um, uh, yeah. So yes. So that's the short answer. You don't have to live on campus. Um, you sh we encourage you to, or um, know that that's just an option, but um, I'll put that question in the chat so that Pachia can answer it once she gets to it. And I will hand it over to Ria to um, answer this question. All right, thanks, Belinda. Okay, so I'll uh, go ahead and start with one of the questions that we get frequently asked, which is, you know, can I apply for the scholarship? And the answer is, essentially no. Um, so I just want to drive home the point that if you didn't receive a scholarship offer with your admissions letter uh, to UCSD, um, you unfortunately weren't selected for CASP. 
So I just wanted to reiterate that piece, but if you're wondering about other funding opportunities, feel free to DM me and we can definitely talk about that. Um, but I just wanted to go ahead and share a little bit about that point. Um, so the our program doesn't have like an official application. So determination and student eligibility for the scholarship is administered through the financial aid office um, and through undergraduate admissions, which is essentially where um, all of you receive notification of being a recipient of our scholarship. I will say though, um, there is a nomination process uh, that was recent that was created uh, where you can have like an institution. So, you know, whether it be like a previous, uh, like a high school or a college or administrator um, can individually nominate a student um, up to two candidates uh, during the UC application process. So like when students are applying uh, to UCs. Um, so all of the information like the application process deadlines and you know eligibility, eligibility requirements can be found on our website and those are assessed um, by the financial aid and scholarship office as well as undergraduate admissions. Um, so I'll go ahead and, go ahead and turn it over. Uh, but as mentioned, I'm seeing some questions come in keep them popping. Um, we will definitely answer them as we are going. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so a question we get a lot is, is there a minimum GPA requirement to maintain the scholarship? So you need to, uh, there's not a specific GPA, you should be in good academic standing and have good academic progress. So it's a GPA usually of a 2.0, at least you wanna shoot for. Um, and then you need to complete a certain percentage of classes that you take. Um, and there's a maximum number of units you can take, but since you're first years, you don't really need to worry about that just yet. Um, but if you ever feel like you're struggling with something, you may not be meeting, um, satisfactory academic progress, or you need to drop a lot of classes, or you think you might not pass some of your classes, which probably won't happen, all right? But just in case, um, please come talk to me. You can also talk to Michelle um, over in financial aid. Um, we won't like just kick you out of the scholarship right away. There could be an appeal process. We can like talk to you. We can figure out ways. Um, to, to make sure that you're getting the support that you need, right? So I think the, the important thing here is like, if you're struggling, please reach out um, and we'll find a way to support you. Um, but most CAS students um, do fine, right? So you're gonna be okay. You belong here, we want you here. You're perfectly capable of doing this work. Um, and, and UCSD is lucky to have you, right? We're the ones that are lucky. So just remember there's a lot of support um, if you have a shaky first quarter. And I'll hand it on to the next person. Hi everybody, me again. <laughs> so uh, does the scholarship cover my housing? It absolutely does. And I wanted to go back to one of the questions that was asked a little bit earlier regarding if guaranteed housing is free or if you, we have to pay for it. Uh, you do have to pay for, for living on campus, but your scholarship does cover it. So um, your housing costs are gonna be determined by a couple of different factors. The first is the facility type that you're living in, whether you're in an apartment or a rest hall. Uh, next, is the room type that you're in, whether you're in a single room or a double bedroom. And when I say that, uh, single rooms means that you are the only person in that bedroom. A double room means that there are two people in that bedroom. And then the final factor that um, plays a role in how much your housing is gonna cost is your dining plan. Uh, as students that are, are gonna be first years this fall, you will have two dining plan options to choose from. So for most of our students, um, the scholarship will cover all of housing and dining. Um, but, you know, there are some, you know, scenarios where it may not cover 100%. And that's if, for example, you're in the single room, which is our most expensive room, and then you decide to go with the most expensive dining plan. Uh, so in, in that scenario, then your scholarship may not cover 100% of your room and board fees. 
And then I did see another question in the chat, and I wanted to go ahead and answer that live for everybody here um, that came from one of our students. Uh, if we want to live in a specific uh, housing uh, community, uh, like, for example, Black housing, how do we apply? So we do have a number of living learning communities that are available to all of our residents on campus. There, there are so many of them. Um, but at, at this point, they're, they're still going through and they're still reviewing viewing to see if we would be able to have all of them next year. We're, we're really hopeful, um, but if you are interested in living in one of those communities, then uh, what you'll want to do is you want to make sure you go through the housing contract process, uh, which for you is going to happen in May. So right now, if you want to live on campus, make sure you do the housing application. And then the second piece is the housing contract. And then that third piece is applying for one of these living learning communities. And we'll be sending you a lot more information about these living learning communities in May um, and letting you know which ones we're going to be having next year so that you will have everything you need to apply for those communities if you're interested. Okay, next person. Is this me? It's me. Hi guys, I'm back. Hey, um, summer session and summer housing and global seminar. So summer, the CASP scholarship doesn't really support um, summer uh, enrollment. We still have financial aid for you for summer, but just not the CASP award. And with that said, I wanna make sure that you are aware that global seminar during fall, winter and spring can be covered by your CASP scholarship. So if you decide to study abroad one quarter, you can take the CASP scholarship and your other financial aid with you to cover those costs. There's also a lot of scholarship opportunities that are available in the global seminar program. So be sure to look for those. But during summer, the CASP scholarship is not part of your financing for summer, but financial aid is. Michelle, this one is you too. If you decide that you need to be here longer than four years, because you're as a first year student, you're getting the scholarship $10,000 a year for four years. And so the CASP scholarship does have limited funding. So unfortunately we can't cover you past that fourth year. However, again, just like in summer, financial aid is still available. Uh, for your fifth and your in continuing years after your fourth year on campus. So you'll still be eligible for financial aid. It just won't be the actual CASP scholarship. Um, the benefits of the, of the program as Karen and Rhea and Kimberly talked about are still going with you though in your fifth year. Okay, CASP isn't going anywhere, just the money part of it, sorry. Uh, won't be part of your part of your journey, but you'll still have the full sense of support. The full team will be behind you. Will I'll still be behind you as, from financial aid perspective, but it just won't be the actual scholarship dollar. There's a question that came into the chat. If a student has the CalVet tuition fee waiver, do they still qualify for the scholarship? They and do. Did, okay. Yes, absolutely. You still qualify for the scholarship. What happens is that when, when you're awarded financial aid, everything is put into one big pot. So that can include any outside benefits such as VA, veterans benefits, scholarships, and then your financial aid. We can never exceed the cost of attendance. So what we would do is probably have to reduce something else if you have the VA benefits, um, not the CASP scholarship. That stays the same at 10000 but some other form of financial aid may be reduced to fit the VA benefits into your financial aid package. And I can talk with you in more detail about that um, offline. And then just to reiterate, so if you have any questions at all about housing, she is the person that you want to contact. Um, her email is there, and Michelle is the person that you want to contact if you have any financial aid questions at all. Um, and just to reiterate what um, Rhea mentioned, if you if you are on this Zoom, we are assuming that you have already been selected and that you received um, the Chancellor's Associate Scholarship. 
um, because if you did not, or if someone shared the link with you, there's unfortunately no way for you to apply. Um, and so if you um, have any questions at all, now is the time to put it in the chat. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I can see some of your beautiful faces. Um, but yes, any questions at all? And again, we just really want to make sure that you have the information, the emails, you can put names to faces, to our faces, um, because we are going to be seeing a lot of each other. You're going to get so many emails from us. Um, it, it's going to be a manageable amount. Um, but we just want to make sure to congratulate you, be one of the first to congratulate you and just make ourselves available. We're not going to keep you on Zoom any more time than you need to. Um, so yes, um, a question came in. Are all the emails going to be sent to your UCSD email or to your personal email? For the time being, we're going to send it to your personal email until after the deadline um, to accept your offer, which is when you will have a UCSD generated email. After you have a UCSD generated email, we will only send emails to your UCSD email. And that's not, um, that's not just our program, it's the university in general. So housing, um, all the forms um, that Pachia mentioned, that's all gonna go to your UCSD email, um, financial aid, anything financial aid related, all official university communication will go to your UCSD email when you have one. Um, so do not only assume that it will go there and no other email. There's a couple more questions that came into the chat. So I'm going to read them out loud and then um, direct them to the person. Can you use leftover financial aid for personal expenses? And I'm going to turn that over to Michelle. Yeah, good question. So remember, I talked about that pot. So all the financial aid goes into that pot. And what we do is we pay your tuition and fees for each quarter. And then if you are living on campus with Pachia, well, not with Pachia, but if you're living on campus, then we'll also pay for the housing charges from your student account. So when you commit to UC San Diego, um, we're gonna create what's called a student account for you. And all of your charges are gonna go there and financial aid is gonna automatically every quarter go into that account and pay for your tuition and fees and your housing expenses and your dining expenses. And then what's left over, we're gonna refund that to you. Now you'll have the opportunity to sign up for something called direct deposit. And I would highly encourage you to do that because any refunds yes. that you get on campus will go directly to your bank account. If you're moving, you know, college students tend to move around. If you move around, you might lose things, you know, your address changes, et cetera. So it's always best to sign up for direct deposit. And you can do that after you've committed. Um, and you do it once for your whole life at, at UC San Diego, unless your bank account changes. Um, so we'll pay your tuition fees, we'll pay your housing, and we're going to give you the difference. We're going to give you a refund for the rest of the financial aid that's left over. That's what you'll use for your books and your housing expenses, and, or excuse me, your books and your living expenses and your food and your going out expenses and all of that. And I'll just put in a plug real quick that you should really think about budgeting. Um, creating a budget is super important. I'm more than happy to help you with that if that's something you're interested in. Um, we host workshops throughout the year um, for students on budgeting and financial literacy. And so that's something you can look forward to. Uh, but, the, but a budget is super important. Did that answer the question? I'm answering a question in the chat. Um, two, um, about submitting the FAFSA every year to maintain the scholarship. Yes, absolutely. Yes. The FAFSA or the California Dream App must be renewed every year to receive any sort of financial aid, including the scholarship. So that is a super, super, super important deadline to keep in mind. And Michelle, I think the deadline stays the same every it, year, correct? Yeah, it does yeah, not change. Yeah. About three years ago, the feds decided to open it up earlier, which is awesome. So every October 1st, the FAFSA and the DREAM application open for students to apply. And Belinda's right. It must be applied for every single year. So every October 1st, put on your calendars now for the next four years. Uh, October 1st. And the deadline is always March 2nd for the state of California. So you have from October to March to get the FAFSA or the DREAM application completed. And that's for all forms of financial aid and scholarships, including the CASP award. Great question. 
Any other questions? I'm going to give it like 15 seconds. We're going to stick around um, for anyone that has questions. Um, but again, congratulations. Um, we're so excited for you. Um, we know that UCSD is only one of your options. We think we're the best option. Um, but we're just excited. Um, and if you have um, any questions after, I'm going to put the main um, email for our program in the chat. It's just casp at ucsd.edu. You can look up um, you, uh, on our YouTube channel, previous CASP 101s. You can see videos from our students. Um, we don't have a virtual office tour. We might possibly do that in the future. I mean, you can follow our social media um, channels, but that's all on casp.ucsd.edu. But again, congratulations. If you don't have any more questions, um, please enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, and we hope to see you soon. Um, we'll stick around if anyone still has questions, but um, for anyone else that is just ready to continue celebrating or Yay, continue. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yes, yes. <Love> it. <laughs> um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye everyone. Congratulations. Thank you Hi. for joining. I actually have a question. Yeah. Um, and I think it's for Ms. Michelle. Yes. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to ask, um, because I have like a specific like situation financially, and um, I'd like to ask if there, there was any way to make like an appointment um, to absolutely. like talk one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, absolutely. So I do uh, Zoom meetings all day, every day with students. So I'm happy to meet with you over Zoom. Do you want to just send me an email? Um, my email, put it in the chat, and then we can set okay. up um, we can set up a meeting and talk about the situation in person. Not in person, okay. but you know what I mean. No. For Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> one on one. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so I'll much. It, yeah. I'll put it in there right now. We have a another question about um, the scholarship acceptance form and where to send that to. Oh yeah. Good question. Um, so on the actual acceptance form at the bottom is our email. It's scholarships at ucsd.edu. And so you can email that to us there or um, the, the uh, fax number is on there too. I know that's way old school, but the fax number is there. Um, or you can email it to me directly, whichever you prefer. So scholarships at UCSD or M-L-O-J-E-D-A at UCSD.edu. <laughs> Thank you guys for the information. Um, all right, I'm going to get going. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for talking. joining us. Andy oh. and Sylvia, do you have? Oh, yeah, go ahead, Andy. Uh, for like you mentioned, like uh, peer tutors. So, like, they, um, they could help you, like, um, like, say you're struggling with like English, um, they'll help you find resources to like help you academically with that? Yeah, yeah. So we have, there's um, two peer mentoring or two peer tutoring programs. One is through the Learning Commons and the other is through Oasis. Um, and they both have peer tutoring in um, math, STEM and writing. Um, so when you come in, you'll get like a lot of information um, and I'll probably be sending out information as well, um, but I can put their websites in the chat. And then, um, thank you, is the other one. Um, they also have uh, learning um, coordinators who can help you with like study methods. Um, so they look at the way in which you're studying and help you kind of figure out better study methods. And then you'll also have like just a peer mentor in general with CASP who will kind of help guide you along and Rhea will match you um, with your peer advisor. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. It's all free. Also, I love the spirit and the energy, Andy. Just wanted to mention that. <laughs> Congratulations, Andy. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. I'm going to stop the recording.